For our next unit of study, we're going to be studying polynomials and polynomial functions. So to begin with, we're going to look at what polynomial functions are. The word polynomial itself is a pretty good definition. Poly means many, and a nomial is a mathematical term, meaning a mathematical term. Um, terms are separated out by addition and subtraction, and polynomials have to have non-negative exponents. So when we talk about polynomials, we have to be able to name them based on a couple of characteristics. The first is their degree, and the second is the number of terms. So what do different polynomials look like? Well, if a polynomial has a degree of zero, then it's called a constant. A polynomial with a degree of one is called linear, and a polynomial of degree two is called quadratic. And at this point, we have ended the ones that we have studied so far in this journey through Algebra 2. But we do have others with some specific names. For instance, a third degree is called cubic. Fourth degree are called quartic. And fifth degree polynomials are called quintic. There are higher degree polynomials, but normally once we get past quintic, we'll just say a sixth degree, a twelfth degree, a thousandth degree polynomial. And the way we determine the degree of a polynomial is by its largest exponent on a variable. So let's take a look at what some of these polynomials look like. An example of a constant polynomial would be something along the lines of simply a number, such as 5. If we want to look at a linear, this will be taking a step back two chapters, but linear would be like an x plus 4. Because the exponent on the x is a 1, that becomes the degree and is the highest one present. A quadratic would be like what we just studied, uh, 4x squared. And that square is what makes it a quadratic. For a cubic, we need to have something with a third exponent, an exponent of 3 on it, such as 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1. Now in this we have our cubic and a quadratic but the highest exponent is that cubic. We also have a constant in there, but again, we go off of what the highest is. For a quartic, we need a fourth, or an exponent of four, such as five x to the fourth plus three x squared. And for a fifth degree quintic, we need an exponent of five, like we would have in the expression two x to the fifth plus three x cubed minus x. So now let's take a look at the number of terms and the words associated with those. In our constant, we have one term. A one-term polynomial carries with it the name of being a monomial. Then, a linear, the one that we have here, x plus 4, has two terms. The first term is x, and the other term is 4. A two-term polynomial is called a binomial. Then in our quadratic, again, we have only one term, 4x squared, so that's a monomial again. Now our cubic, 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1, has three terms, and a three-term polynomial is called a trinomial. Then for our last two here, they're ones we've already seen. Uh, 5x to the fourth plus 3x squared is another binomial. Another two terms, so a binomial, and 2x to the fifth plus 3x cubed minus x has three terms, so that's another trinomial. It is possible to have more than three terms in a polynomial, but after trinomial we simply say it's a polynomial of five terms, or a polynomial of twelve terms. So when we name a polynomial, we do so by both degree and number of terms. So our 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1 we would call a cubic trinomial. And x plus 4 is simply a linear binomial. And we've worked with binomials in the past. So let's see what we can do now, now that we're starting to work with higher order polynomials, as we work our way through in this unit here. One thing that mathematicians have learned over the years is that the degree of the polynomial affects two major aspects when it comes to graphing. 
The first is the number of turning points, and the second is what we call end behavior. Now, turning points are locations on the graph where it is headed in one direction, such as down, and it reverses to go up. So this first graph here has two turning points, and you can see it's a cubic function. On the right here, we have one turning point, and there's a quadratic. Lower left, we have one, two, three turning points, and it is a quartic graph. Then we have a cubic that doesn't really have any turning points, it just has a slowdown. The number of turning points in a polynomial is based on the idea that you will have at most one turning point less than your degree. So a fifth degree can have up to four turning points. It might have none. Odd functions will always have the option of no turning points. Even functions have to have a minimum of one. And the reason for that is a second concept called end behavior. When we look at uh, our graphs, we see two major categories for end behavior. And when we talk about end behavior, we're looking at what happens all the way out at our domain values close to positive and negative infinity. You can see, for instance, with this quadratic, that at the very ends, both sides are going down. And from our study that we just had for quadratics, we know that's because our lead coefficient here is a negative value. However, this quartic, both ends are headed up. And you can see we have a positive lead coefficient. So depending on what that lead coefficient is, even polynomials will have end behaviors in the same direction. And whether that be up or down, really depends on whether it is a positive lead coefficient or a negative, and we've seen that. Now when we start looking at cubic functions and odd ones, we can see we have down on one side and up on the other for a positive lead coefficient, or we have up to begin with and down to end with for a negative lead coefficient. So odd degree polynomials will have opposite end behaviors. And the easiest odd degree polynomial to think of is linear. Linears tend to go from one side to the other on your graph. If we had a quick set of axes and a simple linear function, it will do this or this. So we start on one corner and end completely opposite corner, whereas evens, like our quadratics, will both be up or both be down. Now, as we take all these items into consideration, the degree, the end behavior, the number of turning points, it makes it a bit easier for us to begin to look at how to graph different types of polynomials. Now we've graphed linears and quadratics. Let's take a look at what it means to graph a cubic. For cubic polynomials, the easiest way to begin working on graphing these is to build a simple table of values, as it is for any type of function. So we have our x and f of x, and we're just going to build right around our origin. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I take these values and substitute them in, following my orders of operation, if I substitute in 0, since that's the easiest, we'd have 0 cubed, which is 0, 2 times 0 squared, which again is 0, minus 0, which is 0, minus 2, giving us an end result of negative 2. Now if I start substituting in, say, 1, 1 cubed is 1, so that makes a negative 1. Then 1 squared, 
is 1 times 2 makes 2 minus that 1 and then minus 2 in the end so negative 1 plus 2 minus 1 minus 2 gives me another negative 2 if I substitute in a 2 and run through the same thing. 2 cubed is 8, so I have negative 8. 2 squared is 4, plus, uh, times 2 is 8, so I have a plus 8. Minus 2, minus 2 again, this gives me a negative 4, once everything's put together. Substituting in negative 1, a negative 1 cubed is negative 1, the opposite of that would be a positive 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2. Negative, the opposite of negative 1 would be plus 1, and then minus 2. So this comes out with a positive 2. Substituting in negative 2, we'll get positive 8, plus 8, plus 2, minus 2. So we end up here at 16. Plotting these points gives us points like this. Then, knowing our end behavior, since it's a negative lead coefficient and it's an odd degree, we're going to have end behavior that does something like this. So I'm going to connect my points and get a rough idea of what this looks like. Because both of these are at the same range value, there has to be a little bit of a climb or some sort of way of keeping that constant. So I did the best I could. We can use technology to help graph these, but it is important to know how to do them by hand. Let's do the same thing now for g of x. As I begin substituting in values here, again the easiest will be 0. 0 cubed is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. 1 cubed is 1, minus 1 is 0. 2 cubed is 8, minus 1 is 7. Now negative 1 cubed is a negative 1. Minus 1 gives me a negative 2. And then negative 2 cubed is negative 8, minus 1 is negative 9. I know that I have a positive lead coefficient, and again we're cubic, so that means it's going to look a lot like a y equals x, with this being my end behaviors. So plotting my points, negative 2, negative 9 is just off the graph. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0 and 2, 7 gets me a graph that looks like this and it's going to have a nice gentle climb through this. Again we can use technology to help us to see this as we're learning how but the general shape is what we're looking for. Pick a couple of points but use your degree and your lead coefficient as major markers of what a graph is supposed to look like. Now one last topic that helps us with our evaluation of functions is from a table of values being able to determine what type of polynomial it is. And to do this, we use a concept called common differences. In these tables, we have x and y values. And we're going to find the distance between each set of y values when we have consistent or consecutive consecutive x values. So how far is it from 13 to 4? Well that's minus 9. From 4 to 1 is minus 3. From 1 to 4 is plus 3. And from 4 to 13 is plus 9. These numbers are not the same. So let's take a look at the next level. How far is it from negative 9 to negative 3? Well, that's plus 6. What about from negative 3 to positive 3? Again, that's plus 6. And from 3 to 9 is 6. Because the second set of differences were the same, this means that this is a quadratic function. If the first level had been the same, then it would mean that it is a linear function and it will take out further and further. 
the key for this though is you have to be dealing with consecutive points. Your X's have to follow an exact pattern, an exact consistent pattern. So in our second set here, again, we go from negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. That is consistent. What are our differences? From negative 2 to, ne sorry, from negative 5 to negative 2 is plus 3. From negative 2 to 1 is plus 3. From 1 to 4 is plus 3. From 4 to 7 is plus 3. Because that first row is consistent, this means it is a linear function. Let's take a look at the next one. From the first, are our x values consistent? Negative 3, negative 2, one, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Yes, they are. So let's begin looking. From 23 to negative 16. From positive 23 to a negative 16, that is a drop of 39. From negative 16 to negative 15 is a plus 1. Negative 15 to negative 10 is plus 5. Negative 10 to negative 13 is a minus 3. Negative 13 to negative 12, again, is plus 1. And from negative 12 to positive 29, that is a difference of plus 41. Definitely not the same number. So let's take our next set. From negative 39 to positive 1 is 40. From negative 1 to positive 5 is 4. Positive 5 to negative 3 is a minus 8. Negative 3 to positive 1 is 4. From positive 1 to 41 is a plus 40. Follows a pattern but is not the same number. So let's go again. How far is it from... 40 to 4, well, that's minus 36. From 4 to negative 8 is a minus 12. From negative 8 to positive 4 is a plus 12. From 4 to 40 is 36. Again, it's following a pattern, but it's still not the same thing. So from negative 36 to negative 12 is 24. From 12, negative 12 to positive 12 is 24. And from positive 12 to positive 36 is 24. So we can see that going out, first, second, and third levels were not the same, but the fourth was. That means that this represents a quartic function. And there are ways of using this information to be able to write it without having to go through a long process of uh, a scatter plot and everything else that comes with that. So we can take a look at tables, we can take a look at graphs, learn end behavior, and know how to name our polynomials we're going to be working with. A lot of new information for the start of a new unit. Make sure you have this all down and are ready to use.